early summer, the pond is full, but you can't see the water from up on the little rise because the vegetation is so lush. In fact, the vegetation is so lush that I had to cut out a little bit of the vegetation just so you could see any tadpoles whatsoever. Between being busy, the pond vegetation, and the gray skies, it's been really hard to get good video of the tadpoles ever since this crop was born. So in this video, while I talk about green infrastructure, stormwater, tadpoles, all I'm going to do is show you one day's best footage of tadpoles hanging out in the pond. I try to video tadpoles at varying scales, trying to focus in on the individual tadpoles sometimes, trying to focus in on the community at others. Um, depending on the light, the conditions, um, what I can see, how, how busy the tadpoles seem to be that day. I just try various focuses and try to find the places where I can get the most information by letting the camera run while I just walk away. This pond is a pretty simple ecosystem. It's got, you know, 15 or 20 different kind of plants growing in clumps and occasional. Um, it's got a variety of insects and spiders and you know, microscopic critters. For vertebrates, it's essentially got foulish toad tadpoles and great tree frog tadpoles for, you know, several months in the warmer weather. The adults hang out for, you know, three days to three weeks, depending on the season and what the breeding conditions are. And let's not forget the mallards and the red-winged blackbirds that inhabit the pond. told that at one time it was a pond with a fountain and the layout of the land is such that it's actually pretty close to where the river used to run. The river's now underground and so it, it was an area of wide floodplains with lots of swampy areas so it probably was wet from time immemorial, well at least since the last glacier 13,000 years ago. After four years of study, to me it's pretty obvious that Fowler's toad tadpoles spend a lot of time resting on the bottom, trying to find a substrate that's pretty comfortable. They spend a lot of time eating where they wave their tails and they go up and down pieces of vegetation, scraping algae and um, bacteria off of the leaves, and um, digesting, a little time swimming, and um, almost none in social interactions. Their social interactions seem to be almost random as they bang into each other while they're all going about their own private business. They're hard to watch in person. They're very small. The things around them are very small. But if you can magnify them enough in the camera and let the camera run, coming back to watch the big, on the big screen, you can really start to learn how the tadpoles behave and what they look like and how they grow and develop. I became fascinated, but I've moved on to trying to look at them in a whole system these days. These days, the pond is a rainwater-fed pool. It fills with an inch and a half of rain. It goes dry in 17 days if there's no rain after that. Managing stormwater with new infrastructure designed to use the water in the community, may create community-friendly solutions that no longer pollute our waterways and damage our wildlife. I began studying this rainwater pool to see if there were any lessons for how to use rainwater 
to provide amphibian habitat. Amphibians being most, among the most endangered taxa on the planet. We needed to do something that would help them and they are such a good bellwether. If the amphibians in the community are doing well, you can be pretty sure the community is too. You'll notice that many of the tadpoles are of different sizes. This means they were the result of a different night's mating. Many amphibians are very, very particular about breeding. Often there's only one night of mating a year. This pond, because of the species in it and because of the characteristics, um, you have a much more extended breeding season, which gives the populations of fowler's toads and gray tree frogs much more resilience. This is actually the second cohort. The first cohort died when the pond went dry. But as this is the second year in a row that they've started up again as soon as the pond refilled. I think I've talked enough for the day. I think we'll let you just roll on out of here with about three minutes of uninterrupted tadpole visuals. <laughs>